That's a pretty good one. That's a pretty good crappie right there. So what is happening, people? So today is March the 26th. It's around 10 o'clock or so. And we are back at Kerr Lake today. And we are in that same uh, Rudd's Creek, Butcher's Creek area. You know, I said in uh, the last video I did here, hey, you need to come to a place at least four times to kind of learn it. Well, in this cove right behind me, um, there's a brush pile out here and about 18 feet of water. Now the last time I was here, the crappie was still in the mouth of these coves. Now this, this creek channel, and I'm gonna show it to you. So this, this creek channel right here is where I'm sitting. And, uh, it's a lot of deep water in these, all these creek channels right here. So this is just a cove off of this creek channel. Now I just come across the mouth of this and I marked some crappie in about 12 to 16 feet of water. And also coming into the cove, I marked some fishing at 16 to 20 foot range, some big arches. Not sure whether those were bass or big crappie, but we're gonna see. And so I wasn't here last week, uh, rained us out. I was very sick last weekend. So it's been two weeks since I've been here. Water temperature still about 53 degrees. And uh, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna look around a little bit today just kind of see how the crappie have transitioned. I know I can go up the lake and uh, go up in that upper end and find some crappie. Don't know whether they'll be spooky today. Remember the last time I was up here, the fish were really spooky. And the water is muddier than it was. It is up. The water is up and it is going back down. I think it's about 303 or 304 today is when I checked it last night, but it looks like it's going back down. Barometric pressure dropped out last night. It's supposed to be rising all day today. Whether that makes a difference or not, we'll see. But I feel like we'll spot some crappie in this creek. And if you were slow trolling or spider rigging, it'll be very similar. Uh, I'm kind of just sniping them. I'm, I'm looking with the live scope, trying to pick out those bigger signatures and just trying to drop a lure right in on top of them. I hope they've actually start moving in the brush. That's what I'm hoping for, uh, cause they'll be more concentrated and I won't have to look as much. But anyway, hey guys, stay with us. Hey, and let's go catch a fish. That's a pretty good one. That's a pretty good, that's a pretty good crappie right there. And that crappie, there's 18 feet of water up under the boat. There's a huge brush pile, and he was sitting in about 10 feet of water over top of that brush pile, just sitting there waiting. So I've had to change, so I've had to change, I had to put a heavier head on, so I put that ACC head on with that monkey milk body I'm really really thinking about changing back to that hair jig these fish are still a little spooky now I fish back at this cove there's some brush at the mouth some brush halfway and then there's a brush pile in the back and about 12 feet of water and they were crappy on that too but they spooked right off now I've been on several crappy already and they're just really not in a feeding mode and I've had one other bite so I've been here a few minutes I started out at the mouth, I fished my way back in. But there are fish moving back in the pockets, just to let you know. Uh, I marked some fish back there on some stumps, some just hanging out in the bottom on about eight feet of water. So crappy have begun to make the transition up in the back of these coves and just waiting on the water temperature to get a little warmer. So still have fish. I marked a bunch of fish out there in the mouth and a 
about 22, 23 feet of water. Some in here about 16, 18 feet of water on brush, and then some back in at about 12 feet of water, 10 to 12 feet of water in the back. And I scanned the backs and I could see some fish moving around in six to eight feet of water, and those were probably crappy too. Fish are very active today. I noticed uh, I see a lot of fish. I'm just sitting there looking with the live scope and fish just swimming through, which look like crappy. And, uh, but they're also so active, they moving right off when I get close to them. So hey, let's go catch another fish. Another good one. And that crappy was actually he was sitting outside of that brush. That big old brush pile. When I first came up, I didn't see him. I guess I had a little fish come up, hit at the lure, and I didn't hang him. He moved outside that brush, I guess, to see what was going on, but that's a good 12-inch crappie right there. Boom. Now that fish actually took a minute to bite. I don't know if I was trolling past him if he would have came over and bit, but I had to drop down on him about twice and actually to get him to bite. So I'm sure you're curious about what I'm fishing around. And I'm gonna get the other camera out and I'm gonna actually show you what I'm fishing around. So uh, I've been saying for the last couple of weeks, I'm gonna try to remember each time I come out and do a video to actually give you a bird's eye view of actually what uh, I see on top of the water and then we'll look at the live scope and let you see what I see under the water. So let's go. And you'll see it beginning to come in the screen on the bottom right hand side. And you'll see those um, I'll tell you what, let's do a little bit more down on the depth range. So you can see, I mean that's basically what we see right there. Turn around and look back at that brush pile. And I can see down in there that there is actually fish in that brush pile. And the way I'm angled, the, the wind will probably blow me right over it, but to give you a perspective, there's my lure there. And I'll just kind of drop that lure and kind of float it. Maybe we can get one to come out. I see it looks like it's one close to the top right there. We'll just allow the boat to float. See him right there on the very top? See if we can tease him up to bite. Sit right there and let it float right past him, didn't he? Now, when I'm doing this, I lost sight of my lure, but I knew I know that I am right on the very top of the brush pile, so I'm not gonna. I'll just hold what I have on the brush pile. See, there's my lure there, because I don't really want to get hung in it and disturb it. And you know, if a crappy is halfway aggressive, he will he will come back, he will come up out of there and hit that lure. Looks like he might be moving. Get a good mark on him right there. See him drop right off of the lure. He 
He's a good crappie too. Yeah, he's a good he's a good fish. He's actually behind us now. It took us a while, but you know, that's the size. It's a bunch of fish in there that size. We don't, that's not what we after. Those, it's like those big ones are hanging around those brush piles kind of on the outside. So um, I'm gonna ease back out to the mouth. I think I'm gonna change and go back to a hair jig. Anyway, it'd take me a few minutes to do that. So hey, stay with us. We're gonna go catch a fish. a little better. Yeah, he's pretty good crappy. Put him in black well. Well let me give you an update. So that fish was in about 12 feet of water. Now you can see behind me back into this cove I went all the way back to where it got about six feet deep the water's up about three so that tells me that the water normally probably is only a couple of feet deep back there because the the lake is up right now so I went all the way back there and I actually saw some crappie in the back of these coves but they were extremely spooky uh, basically I couldn't even get a lure to them before they would move off some were sitting on some stumps under the water some on logs under the water some just right off the bottom about a foot you get close to them they just move off the crappy back down here that's in deeper water are biting actually better that are suspended up off the bottom whether that's 16 feet of water or whether that's eight feet of water they seem to be less spooky in this deeper water so i'm back down right behind me there's a transition when you come up the lake here you come out from about 25 feet of water and then it comes up fairly quickly within about a hundred yard stretch here into about 15 feet of water and there's some structure underneath the water here that's kind of what it's a lot of bait fish hanging around that structure so that's what that fish is on and even these fish are still spooky some and uh, i'm gonna ease back down here i'm gonna fish from here to that cove and then i may ride up the lake and try to find me a spot I can get out of this wind. And uh, but hey, stay with us. Let's go catch a fish. Uh, just a little one. Throw back wind's blowing so hard i had a I had two 16th ounce jigs wind's blowing so hard when i pitch out i see a signature and i pitch out wind puffing against the line it don't sink very fast so i, I went up to that um heavier big that's a big eighth i might even be a 3 16th ounce head still fishing that monkey milk and put a hair jig above it to give it a little bit more weight but that's the only way I can get it to get down fast enough the wind puffs the boat around so by the time the lure gets down the, the, to where the depth of the fish it's done drifted off and the fish can't see it but anyway hey guys we're getting ready to uh, get ready to end this video Crappy definitely have started to make a transition. They are some in the very back of the coves. Those fish are still very spooky. They're not really stacked on brush. The ones out in the middle of the coves on some deeper brush are usually suspended over top. I caught a few down in the brush, but all of those are really small crappy. 
the larger ones were spent suspended up over top of the brush the the bigger fish that i caught all in all it was a kind of a slow day today i had to fight the wind uh, most of the time to actually drop right down on top of the crappy but anyway uh the weather's water's up now to about 56 degrees so just in a couple of weeks they're gonna push right up on the bank so they're in transition here they they're on that first uh, right at the mouth of the coves where it drops off in the main channels back if you can find uh i stayed mainly in that deeper cove it was deep water run all the way to the back of the cove it gives those fish a place to transition up shallow as well as deep i fished a couple of the shallower coves and with that line scope i can see if it's any fish in there it doesn't take me long to ease back in there if i don't see any fish i come out i don't waste a lot of time in there actually fishing anyway I appreciate all the support that I get for this channel. We appreciate you subscribing. Um, hit that like button. Click the notification bell so you don't miss an episode of Wildlife Adventures. And as always, you remember, it's a wildlife, and I'll see you on the